Okay, uh, let's uh, invite our next group. Uh, hello, uh, uh, we are a group of nine, and uh, our project is about to distribute examples of 3D human pose estimation. So, I will give you a brief a summary about uh, the project. So, I'm Shishi from Chang University. And um, our task is actually is to uh, uh, perform the CD human pose estimation in video. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, we're going to use, let's say, 27 frames of uh, 2D key points to predict the uh, 3D pose estimation. And uh, um, here, here, we uh, employ the ensemble models, which means we're going to. Um, so which means we're gonna have uh, uh, multiple models training in parallel. And uh, here it's the uh, uh, structure about the ensemble models, but this is just the bioregulation. We could do more because your data set, you could send the same training data to all the uh, members, or you could uh, split your data set, set to different uh, members. And those members, it, it could have a uh, shared same architecture, or it doesn't have to. Uh, so, um, but in our case here, we use uh, uh, the, not the same training. We have training data, but we uh, split the data uh, to different uh, subset and then send it to the uh, different model. Um, so here, the motivation we use uh, ensemble model, it was used for, I mean, at the beginning, it was mainly used for to estimate the predictive uncertainty, which includes the data uncertainty and the load uncertainty. The data uncertainty usually because uh, your inherent uh, merit system, uh, you, you have some inherent uh, error in your merit system, so which is irreducible, or it is might be because the mode uncertainty, which means like uh, you know, it could be like uh, you don't have a perfect uh, uh, mode architecture, you don't have a perfect uh, I mean, optimizer or anything, um, which, which involves the model training procedure. But uh, here, um, actually, actually, research also found like uh, the ensemble model actually could imp improve the test accuracy. So here, we mainly I mean, use the ensemble model for the second goal, which is we try to improve the, uh, or we, we decrease the test error in our project. And here, to make it, uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, in it's very natural to make the yeah. uh, ensemble model to be distributed. And we have kind of uh, two, I mean, um, to uh, method, the one is the data parallel, uh, data distributed, which means you partition your training data, then you send it to a different worker, and you have the same model. Or you could uh, kind of have the same data, but uh, your model is partitioned. But in our case, actually, it's a combination of both. So our data is uh, uh, are partitioned, and also, but our model is not partitioned, just the each model is the same, but it was. Uh, in the different worker nodes. So technically, I mean, the way we em, uh, uh, implement mm -hmm. the ensemble model is uh, each member going to be distributed in the worker node, and uh, um, the whole data set, training mm -hmm. data set, was going to store in a driver node. Because uh, um, each, uh, uh, each worker node might have limited uh, space, space, so we're going to sample a subset of uh, training data and then send it to the worker node. And uh, this uh, size is constant. It depends on which kind of uh, worker node you use. Um, and the about 3D human pose estimation like task, so basically this is going to be the input, but we're going to do some uh, um, uh, pre-process on the video. And then uh, my team member gonna fix that later. Yeah. So and then this gonna be uh, the three D uh, uh, process the uh, uh, key points you want to predict. But the input uh, would be two D key points. So the output would be three D key points. And here we try to minimize in the gradient distance uh, uh, between the I mean uh, uh, the average uh, gradient distance between the three D key points here. But uh, in the future, we can also, because this is a regression um, problem, so in the future, it could also be like, uh, you don't predict the, the point prediction, you can also provide a sigma, which is, you, you think uh, the output, output uh, is a Gaussian distribution, each member gonna uh, represents one, uh, one of the Gaussian distribution, you can have the, uh, the confidence about uh, your prediction. And so, and, 
our own or in our work, we train or distribute and assemble and label data for 3D human host estimation. And we use this human EBA data set and the more details can be introduced later. And uh, because there are many ways to aggregate uh, the predictions uh, from different uh, um, uh, member or different uh, model. Here we many, many use, just use the mean of predictions. And then further, because uh, our hypothesis, like when we increase the number of uh, mem members, the test error should be further uh, reduced. So we can uh, we also have some analyze and the uh, result of the realization later. Uh, so that's all. So some parts of the code were taken from this repository. Let's uh, just discuss references for the future. Um, okay, so uh, the, the data set that we used is called Human Eva data set. It's um, um, a data set with uh, Three subjects performing various different actions like walking, jogging, location, etc. And um, it was uh, recorded uh, using three synchronized cameras and um, uh, to obtain like, the images and also the motion capture system to get the 3D graphics. And um, the model that was uh, used to, uh, to describe the the, the human voice is basically gift and journey that uh, has got. Um, so this is nothing interesting. And first we load the data set, that, uh, which is like a dictionary of dictionaries um, with, uh, where each key represents like subject and action. And uh, we, want, we want to uh, process it in that way that is, it is uh, uh, easier than to work with uh, in Spark, so we transform it into C3. Um, nothing interesting here, this is basically what, what we do. Uh, we are also splitting between provenience into training and test data. And um, in some other like skeleton, uh, pre saving skeleton, and uh, that's interesting. See, we should get the visualization of uh, how the input data looks like, but uh, does it seem to work? Anyways, it's similar. Okay. Um, so, it's, uh, some chunks of video sequences. We don't use images, we only work with uh, uh, to take the plots. So, this is working. Uh, Jogging and so on. Um, yeah. And now we take the CSV files and uh, first of all, make sure that. Um, um, okay, it seems it's some. Oh, okay. That uh, in the train and test data we have uh, enough, uh, enough uh, of. Uh, Data for each uh, action. Um, yeah, and there are some explanation of uh, like on the formatting. So we have x, y, z for three D code coordinates and y, v for the projected coordinates. And we group subject action and camera because we have three cameras into one um, uh, identifier. Then we assemble the um, the features and targets using the vector assembler. Uh, where, yeah, features would be just like uh, for you. Yeah. Oh, no. Do you have, <laughs> did you say one subject? It, uh, it is three subjects. Yeah, it's three separate skeletons for each. No, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, the same models adapted to, to all of them, then, which is like just 15 uh, joints. Yeah. So it's what you've seen on the previous but slide. Like the, this, is this is not, uh, uh, it shouldn't be a specific length. Uh, between the points, so it's it's, it's just we just know that these two joints are not connected, but the line could be different for different subjects. Yeah. So and we don't uh, constrain them. Yeah. Um, and then it's kind of learned from the from the data. Uh, yeah. So uh, the features would be um, uh, thirty-dimensional vector 
two times 15. For the key points, um, the targets would be a uh, 45 dimensional vector, where, which is three times 15 key points. And um, then, uh, so the way the, the model that we choose, uh, the, way, the way it works is that it, um, it's a temporal model. model. So it takes a, a bunch of, uh, um, of uh, I guess, sequence of key points uh, for a certain, like, um, for current frame to look into a couple of previous frames and a couple of future frames because we are working with videos. It's, uh, it's all right. So maybe for real time, you only want to look at the previous frames, but uh, in our case, we only took, uh, uh, we took uh, both previous and future frames. And um, the receptive field, which, which is like the total number of frames we're looking to, is 27. So, so uh, the model takes, like in this example, it takes nine uh, frames. Then it uses temporal convolution to uh, to get uh, uh, basically uh, like three. Like uh, in the second level, it will be three uh, outputs. Then again, we use uh, another convolution and then we take one. So it's like a simple uh, visualization of how it works. Um, and uh, because of that, we need to uh, um, process the data in that way so that each data sample is already a, a chunk of uh, uh, key points. So we use uh, called generating receptive fields, and we do it with SPAR with a window uh, function. Um, and uh, one more thing to mention about it is that it's uh, nice to do it a priori because otherwise we would need to send uh, much higher, much bigger like chunk sums of data of, of, into each work and all. Yeah. Could you scroll up? Just yeah. 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 That's great. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be great. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So we want to do it a priori because we don't want to do it every time on the worker node, which and we send uh, the whole chunk of, let's say, I don't know, 1,000 frames, and then we take random 2027. 20, we just, we, uh, yeah, pre-process everything a priori, so that then we will um, just uh, simplify the work uh, uh, when uh, doing the training in parallel. This is how it looks like, just for the, just the sequence of of targeting features. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Just numbers. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, then we uh, converted um, into, since we, the model that we use is uh, uh, really not defined by Torch, we will need the Torch tensors. So we will use RDDs with the uh, Torch tensors. Um, training test data. So there are some more splits, I'm not interested, and there goes comes up. So the architecture that we use to predict this uh, real process is a CNN, and uh, this treats this um, this temporal dimension as the channels, and it convolves over the, does a 1D convolution over the, the key points, the two dimensions of the key points. So this is taken from the paper that we received and cited earlier. Yeah. There are no more PyTorch code here. Oops. Yes. Okay, and as we previously mentioned, the loss that we're optimizing is this mean per joint position, or it's basically the, the mean Euclidean distance between the 3D ground truth and our predicted 3D processes. 
Yeah, remember, it's basically you can use two fingers to scroll. If you have three, you can get that. So. Two fingers to scroll. Two fingers to scroll. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And here we have our typical training function. This is what you would normally use in PyTorch, and this is what we will use on the, on the on every single work node to train each ensemble member. To make this parallel, we use uh, PySpark. So basically what we do is that we, we send, using our RDD, we send initial model parameters and training data to each worker node. And then we return trained parameters to the driver node. Uh, this is how we were able to do it. I guess it's not optimal to, to send, to keep passing the model parameters back and forward to the worker nodes and, uh, and the driver node. In an ideal situation, we would like to keep the weights on the worker nodes, but uh, we couldn't figure out how to do this in PySpark, maybe some other library would have been better for this. If you're not using broadcast and videos, we're not using broadcast now. Because you can do that in a nice part. It's the same as Okay. There's only two things, right? It's just uh, broadcasting and calling. Uh, this works as long as the models are not uh, too large, I guess. Yeah. So they will, will have to fit on the, on the driver or whatever that way. Yeah. And same with our predictions. So we <laughs> used RDD to uh, to distribute, we send our testing data to all the workers, uh, return our predictions and aggregate them into the ensemble average of the driver. So in the round script, we Iteratively sample a bunch of data from our data already like this. We send these along with model parameters to the worker nodes, return model parameters, sample new data from our data already, and do this iteratively. So if we Move on to some results. We have a bunch of copy code. So here we have some testing errors as functions of training time for different ensemble sizes. And this, of course, looks a bit underwhelming because we, we would have wanted the larger some sizes to perform um, better, but we can cannot see that from this figure. Maybe that we can see that uh, results are a bit smoother for the larger some sizes, but not clearly better. If we, however, make a more thorough evaluation of all these, in total, eleven models that we have uh, trained. We see that if we sample different subsets for different ensemble sizes, so this is at the end of training. 
present the different subsets, these 11 models for different sizes. We can see that we get a, a reduction in uh, as we increase down some of the sizes. But the, we also see that the standard deviations are large. So if we're lucky with a smaller ensemble, we can outperform the large ensemble. The question? Um, it's the piece where it is like, uh, yeah. Uh, Point four. Yeah, uh, meters, like whole units. Um, like zero point four. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's meters, but uh, we uh, yeah, we have some of this. Let's 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 Alexandra started if there were three different subjects with different with of different sizes, wouldn't the useful to the process to data in terms of some sort of normalization? Of the uh, of the feature, so that we think that the joint length. Well, as if they if they, if they were in the water, totally moving slightly different patterns, you uh, they may want to normalize the feature. So, so you just rescale the length of the joints. <coughs> so, uh, on the distance between yeah. the joints, I guess yeah. that would have been interesting. Uh, uh, and then the kind of diagnostic to it is because if the uh, error is measured in distances between jo the position of the joints, then, then that could be dependent on the subject that yeah. you're trying to, uh, to evaluate. Yeah. Yes, if you have long, long arms, you don't have like a yeah. 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 okay. okay. Of course, it assumes that they are both within, uh, they are, they are within a certain centralized position of yeah. the camera yeah. so that the normalization doesn't move, move somewhat outside of yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of priors we could use, uh, like for this kind of uh, learning. Uh, we just did the uh, experiment based, based on this paper that we found. And uh, some last minute results here. We visualized, uh, I keep clicking. We visualized uh, ensemble predictions uh, and individual model predictions here. Black is the ground truth, three depots, orange are the predictions. Uh, so we, we can at least see, um, at least in this, uh, for this case, we see that here we have one model model that has very good predictions, whereas this model is seems to be slightly off. And in that, in that case, of course, the average, ensemble average will... Uh, that also seems fine, just translating. <laughs> yeah. 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 We need to know because they come out. It's the the hips and legs in those two, or like in the middle one, like the, like, you're, uh, but the front of your loose kind of, or do I get that wrong? In yeah, this one, no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like uh, yeah, this part is a little bit correct. Yeah, yeah. Right, right here is kind of more consistent, but this part here is doesn't touch seeming correct. Yeah, this is. For the sure. You asked him by the spine, but... yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the yeah. 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 To make realistic predictions, yeah. uh, anatomy-wise, 
celebrations would be quite open to something that they get the coverage in the middle. But here, when you talk about prediction, you actually mean the model's prediction of the post estimation, like not what the what the human is going to do in the future. No, no, it's the prediction is the three defaults. Because that would be like, uh, yeah, interesting. You predict what a nation No, no, because your architecture, right? Because you're already seeing it in the future, but you can actually possibly redo it. You know, like those uh, Christian did, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can sort of try to actually predict what the post will be, right? And they can do it. It's just you can choose one, like, okay. this, okay. and it's okay. yeah. but it can be called it's like the only Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little bit different. Interesting. Okay, so are you guys done? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's start them. Yeah, I mean, I think this is really good. I'm super curious if you try to use like broadcast and activate the variables. Yeah, right. So yeah. 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 yeah, then start to do the broadcast carefully. And as long as you're just passing close in a lot of CDI. So, so yeah, it's, it's basically, um, yeah, it's really good. <laughs>